Hey, hello everyone, welcome back to X4 Foundations. I'm Afro Luigi, and you see this ship? The Okinawa IGM 762? Well, and it's carrying hull parts and advanced electronics? Well, if we go to the Terraform menu and we scroll way over, we'll see that that's all they need. Hopefully. Hull parts, see? That's the, that's the last of the goods it needs to finish the arcology. And our, our arcologist could house 200 million people. And I only need 250 million on the planet, and I already have 50 million. So I'm almost done terraforming. Um, the weird visual bug I've encountered here is the objectives menu didn't update with Tropical Resort, but I've built the Tropical Resort. Now, I'm not sure what's causing that, but I think it has something to do with the fact that it's expected for you to progress in order. It's expected for you to build the wheat fields, then to build all the housing, then to build an am amenities. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but I kind of built Tropical Resort as soon as I could just to get it out of the way. So I did that, and this is my... I have... I did complete this off-camera a couple times already, actually, just to make sure. And it, once the Arcology is built, it does trigger the completion for the quest right away. Another thing I've done off-camera is if we go over to Research, scroll all the way over, High Mass Teleport 2 is researched and ready to go. So if we go to the map, scroll all the way out, I've got nav beacons in place for Scale Plate Green, which is where we're going to teleport the headquarters to. At which point, we'll start terraforming Scale Plate Green. And yeah! So, um, I did after, actually, the Xenon, as you can see here, I've built, whoa, that, you can, interesting, <laughs> I did not know you could do that, okay, that's good, okay, uh, let's get this back to, uh, there we go, that's the right, that's the proper way I always have it, so, yeah, I, I, the Xenon with their three shipyards down here and two wharfs. There's a wharf here, and I did some exploring off. I, what happened is, well, I, I tried to record this effort. We tried to record this episode once already, but I've been encountering an issue with Windows where if I don't boot it up and immediately reset it, the, the game will lag out until I reset it. And I tried recording before, before resetting, and my, I kept getting encoding errors. So when I went to edit the video... I noticed there was no the audio didn't get saved, just the audio. The video was there, so I've had to go, reload a previous save and go this. So there's actually a wharf out here, and there's a wharf here. So this little xenon corner here was packed full of xenon ships, and they were actually pushing into. They actually pushed. Oh well, those ships are well off the ecliptic. But yeah, they actually pushed into Company Regard and were pushing into Hewa's Twin. They had a defense platform right here. I think they were trying to build a solar power plant here. And they were pushing in before my fleets arrived and pushed them back out. I reclaimed Company Regard. The Talati moved right back in. And we're going to be pushing into Scale Plate Green. We're just going to cl claim Scale Plate Green 1. We're going to terraform the planet. Then we're then we're going to pull back to retreat our entire all our forces. And we'll start terraforming. I think Getsofuni is what I wanted. I, I, I was thinking I wanted to save Getsofuni for last base, my headquarters there. But I was looking at it, and I think I might put it in memory of Prophet instead. Um, interesting thing, though, about the um, uh, the terraform missions is they buff the, the ones for Antigone. They increase tech, uh, Antigone's uh, fleet options. They make them have more fleet, and they all try to ag more aggressively move into territories. So when I terraformed a te a Frontier's Edge, it, this is now officially one of theirs. So even if the Xenon moved back in or someone was in, it, Antigone will try to reclaim it. And it's the same with Atea's Misfortune. And I've also noticed, as you can see here, the, the, the Antigone on their own, because remember, in this playthrough, we split up the Argon government with the Antigone, so there's not a lot of going back and forth there. A Antigone has successfully, on their own, pushed the Xenon out of Atea's Misfortune, and are slowly pushing the Xenon out of faulty logic. And as we also can see here, is they have staked a claim to true sight. If we defend the, the Holy Order does not have any defense platforms. And they're trying to push into uh, Holy Vision as well. I So I think if I, with each buff I do to the Antigone, I think they'll make it, I want, and I'm wondering, 
if Hol the Holy Order will survive. I've severely, and if the Holy Order falls, I can see the God Realm successfully defeating du the Duke's Awakening. Um, Tempest, I should say. Which would be fascinating to see, but we'll see. Uh, Holy Vision, with having even less territories to cover, um, the Holy Order might be able to hold the line. Oh, they're rebuilding their uh, trading station down there. They lost their trading station. Interesting. I'm pretty sure the trading station was supposed to be up here. Wait, have they lost their wharf? Ah, did they lose their wharf and shipyard? Uh, I think the Holy Order is gone. I think they've lost. It's just a matter of time. Unless they can rebuild their wharf and shipyard. What's my uh, rep with the Holy Order? Do I have trade updates with them? I do. So, I'm not seeing a war for shipyard for them. They might... Yeah, I think they're toast. That's interesting. I might try setting up some auto traders in their territory to keep them alive. On the other hand, I've been, I'm tempted to let them die out. Because I kind of want to make this safe. Once I've done all the terraforming, my paint the map player green playthrough. But we'll see. Are those the last of the terraforming drones? Yes, it is. So we're almost done that. Oh. What's this guy's doing down here? Oh, the, okay, that's why they're down there. One nice thing about it, if I paint the map player green is I won't have to. I won't be fighting for resources anywhere. They'll all be mine. Yeah, I think my first. If I do do that, my first opponent will be the split. I'm going to push the split. Basically, claim all of this territory. I kind of want to see if the um, Xenon are able to defeat the Parenid up here. So I might leave this. These actually, if I destroy these Xenon sectors. The Xenon might rebuild over there, so might start pushing more of that. Because that's the thing about the Xenon, is if the more you concentrate their sectors, the more effective their mining operations become, because they're not sending ships across to the far clusters. Because right now, um, most of their resources are focused down here, but they're still, try they'll, they'll, they're still trying to have good shipped around to these various clusters. So if we get rid of them... Actually, I think if we get rid of these sectors first, it'll make transit easier. Although, the, the curbs are trying to push the Xenon out of Matrix 451, so we'll see how that goes. And the Talati are kind of trying to help me here. They, they do have their fleet. Where are you going? Oh, they're restocking. Okay, that makes sense. But yes, how are the Terraform drones doing? So basically, that's what I've done, is to record the finish for this. Before we start tell terraforming scale plate green. Now, last time I did this, like I said, I've tried to record this episode once before, and last time I did this, there was a Talati station, like, right there that got kind of nuked by my, my the headquarters. And there was a small, there was a fairly large group, group of Talati ships in the area, which I've not seen here. Oh, I do have, also one thing I forgot to mention, is I have started building my own Asgards. I've got three or four of them. I have my personal one, which has been modded. I've called it the Pride of Lusitania right there. It also, yeah, my Courier Vanguards and stuff. Oh, I don't have the Courier Vanguard on there. Let's just send it back home. So, it also, oh. Today, we are experiencing history. Here I am on the freshly named world of Cinder, standing in a field. The weather is warm, but not uncomfortably so. A few clouds pass overhead, and a light breeze rustles the grain around me. To think that not too long ago this place was about as inhospitable as they come. It's staggering. One can't help but be hopeful for the future. If things like this can be achieved, well... This was Tracy Barron, 
reporting on location for ANC News. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some awe to get back to. So, now that that's done, uh, we'll teleport here, and I have one more th we want to go through and do... Oh, another thing I've been worried is I've been living up my alliance of word reputation, just to get it up Entering there. Entering system. Because why not? Misfortune. Let's head over to the uh, messages. Uh, yeah, here you can see I have the alliance, but let's watch the little video. One thing I like, a couple things I like about this video is if we look in the background, you can very see that this video was designed for the core game where you're not, where you don't have the option of using tectonic scaffolding to get rid of the, the quakes, or you have to cap all the volcanoes. Uh, but I did tectonic scaffolding, so those technically aren't necessary, but they're there. So whatever, I don't care that much. Um, and another thing is, two things, you have this one guy here pushing the hay bales manually. No vehicles, no tools, he has to push by hand. And there's just this one guy over here to the left with a scythe watching him push. It's like, how creepy is this guy? Get to work! And like another point about like the, the guy pushing the hand down, there's a vehicle right there that's probably associated with the farm. But yeah, just a few fun things. But yeah, that's another terraforming mission done. So now that we're at the HQ, let's go talk to Boso. And let us accept the next terraforming mission. Let's see, scale plate pack is what we're going to do. Build housing for one billion people is going to take forever. But we're going to do it. This individual contacted me through a mutual friend, they called it? Apparently, your name has been going around in certain circles, and not in the they're a problem kind of way either. They seem very interested in the rumors that we might be able to make planets habitable, and I do find the prospect of reducing piracy somewhat appealing. All right, I first Dal didn't have anything to say about that. So, oh, time to oh, we, should, we need to talk to Bosa to move the headquarters. Hello there. There appeared to be ships at that location. They would be unlikely to survive. Would you like me to continue? Charging the high mass teleportation drive. Goodness me. And we've arrived. We're going to hear a lot of explosions Entering momentarily. System. Scale plate green. The power system is stabilizing. Uh, so what's my rough with the Tlati right now? It seems to have been successful. Oh, they, they don't hate us that much. Perfect. Oh, wow. We took out a Tlati... Um, Oh, that's a Xenon Fighters there. What's that? Took out a Xenon K, a Tlati Phoenix Vanguard. And that's the station I was talking Oh, that station survived. Let's see if it keeps surviving. So let us pause the game just to bring these ships. All orders and assignments. You're going to come through and protect the headquarters. Same with you. And let us immediately jump into terraforming. So, I think the first thing we want to do, because cleaning up radioactive uh, contamination requires a lot of advanced resources, we are going to basically go for the rebates, resource rebates first. So energy, sales, claytonic salt, we're going to reduce the costs of all that, just to make it easier to build up. Eventually, we might, I might think about doing energy. Yeah, because that will save us some money later on as well. But first things first, we need to get some of this stuff going. 
Let's start with the clean refineries because I need to set up. Because uh, since I'm so far away from Terran space and my headquarters is entirely reliant on Terran goods, but doesn't supply them, I need to set up some ships going back and forth between the headquarters and Terran space. Drop off computer, computer electronic substrate, micro, metallic microlyze, and silicon carbide. Because the rest of the stuff we can get from the community plants and the Tladi in specific, but I do need supply lines for the Terran goods so I can keep producing. So we're going to start with the common community plants goods. And one thing I do want to do is I do want to show off the um, Asgard. Production will start right away. And we I'm going to just target the uh, Xenon. Hello there. So yeah, and I do want to target the Xenon Wharf in particular, which is down here, I'm pretty sure. Where are you going? Sin. Oh, you're going to jump around. There we go. Let's move this. Let's have this thing moving like a katana. Entering system. Scale plate green. And the issue with the Asgard is it turns like a brick. Because I'm I'm turning left right now. And momentum is carrying the ship right. Oh, we cleared it. Getting through this debris field is going to be interesting. I don't think we're going to clear that piece. Oh, that was right. We didn't clear it. If we clear the wharf over there, we won't have to worry about... Um, I might actually slap on just one or two... Uh... Yeah, as you can see here, the Xenon are starting to send all their forces in. Why are you targeting the Talati defense platform? Do not target the Talati defense platform. That happened last time I did this too off camera before I did I had to do the reload because of the recording messed up. That for some reason when the uh, when Delilah Swan Song jumped in, it tried to destroy the Tladi defense platform. Now I think we're almost out of the debris field. Yeah, because the debris field only surrounds that little gas pocket there. Now we're going to go under the wharf just so we can have clear line of sight for more things. And I'm going to show off the Asgard's main weapon. Unknown station. Now I'm pretty sure that's the Xenon Wharf right there. There is a, a defense platform or two over there as well. Yeah, that's the wharf right there. You can see the cargo modules there on the right. I don't have any fancy mods on this thing. I don't have the uh, ship mods for the uh, super fancy uh, upgrades. I mostly just have some standard ones. Actually, I think I can show you if we just go to ship info. Uh, loadout. There we go. Those are my mods. The most uh, Just basic quality mods. The ATF XLR main battery is the one I have the most the strongest mod for just for the cooling. Oh look, the Xenon are okay, so the these guys do spawn in Xenon sectors. That's 
good to know. I think I'm a little close to the Xenon Wharf. Yep, little close. I need to get out of range. Something hit us. Oh, that's where he got blown up. Ah, crap. Are we gonna lose? All damaged. Yeah, I know, I know. Come on. Oh, we made it. We're out of range. Shields are recharging. That was close. I think my main goal here is to destroy that ship production. Which actually is more health than I expected. It actually survived an attack from the Asgard's main weapon. Why is the Asgard is still able to have an unknown station? Yeah, that's a lot of drones that are coming at us now. So I need to, uh, apparently I need, I need to replace my personal uh, katana there. Oh well. <laughs> at least the Asgard survived. Are we even hitting the wharf with our... With our uh, Yep. And this is basically, uh, excuse me, the Asgard shields are strong enough that I've actually never had to, well, I've never lost any turrets. And we're just going to sit here and let the, it take down all those drones. Apparently I need to calibrate my joystick again. I'm getting some drift, but oh well. I feel kind of silly that I almost lost the Asgard and stuff like that. Something as silly as getting just too close to the Xenon station. On the other hand, this is going to train up this will let my crew, uh, service crew level up. There we go. We have crippled Xenon ship production in this area. No more. The Xenon, all the Xenon ships will now have to come in through the superhighway and the uh, gate. Well, actually, just through the superhighway. What is going on there? I'm just going to let that happen. And yeah, but this is basically it. For now, I'm going to siege, siege down the station. Oh, another dead drone up here on the left, right here. Oh, I accidentally overheated the thing. So, oh well. That is the courier as well. Actually, where is the courier? Uh, never mind. Remove that order and go back to the headquarters. You're gonna stay at the headquarters. Yeah, an eleven credit <laughs> withdrawal is probably the ship I have leveling up my reputation with the. Uh, Alliance of Words. How is my headquarters fleets coming? They 
Y'all have a destination, right? Oh, some of the ships are on their way. Yeah, if you, yeah, but yeah, that's basically, and there you can see, normally it take a lot longer to get the uh, wharf down to 97, 87%, but the Asgard main beam is ridiculously strong. And yeah, once the wharf is done, I think I might actually, like I said, I'm tempted to set up some basic resource production on the headquarters, but we'll see. Just gotta figure out what ship I want to use for shipping goods back and forth to Terran space. I'm probably gonna stick to just a get a couple of Baldrics on that duty. On the other the buffalo, actually if I can pick, I have a few buffaloes I could probably reassign. They can carry more and they've got good, pretty good travel drives on them and they accelerate fairly quickly. So they're probably the best bet. I think I'll go with the buffaloes. Those, those three buffaloes I have. Yeah, it's really not effective. Uh, that's the, down, the biggest downside to the Asgard's main weapon, is it's such a long cooldown between shots, and you really want to weigh that get all the way cooled down before you fire it. If you don't, if you let it get over, well, if you, do, if, if you don't cool it all the way down, it takes way too long to do any damage, because the Asgard, as you, as you guys have noticed, the Asgard main meaning travels, and it does, doesn't do damage until it hits. So there's the travel time you've got to account for, as well as the actual impact. No, and tra while it's traveling, it's using up heat. It's spitting out more drones. This is why I'm targeting the docking modules first to see if I can get rid of the drones. How many docking modules does this thing have? It has two, and they both shot out a whole bunch of drones. How many drones are out there right now, I wonder? That's not the map. That's the map. Eh, it's, it's a lot of drones, but not that bad. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't actually show me the uh, mining drones on the thing, though. Yeah, well, next I'm about to fire the Asgard main weapon and watch what it watch what the heat does for it. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I'm going to use too many Asgard. They seem it's a, they're definitely a little silly and not that effective. I definitely think we'll stick to using Sins for my mainstay battle, my mainstay fleets. I might keep some Osakas, add some Osakas to patrols, but. Mostly it'll be sins for my actual fleets. And you see we're already down to 80% hull on the uh, the wharf. And this would have taken a lot longer with my with the using Delilah Swan Song. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna end the episode here. And I next episode will probably be in a what Will either be when uh, Tides, well, whichever comes first, Tides of Iris or Scale Plate Pack Green being front and terraformed. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.